Which one of these two photos do you think was shot with the newer and much more expensive Sony a7 IV? Now, I've noticed that when comparing the photos between these two cameras side by side, and especially when you're consuming it on a small device, then it can become a challenge to notice the difference. In theory, the a7 IV should always smash the a6400. Now, that's not to say that APS-C is inferior to full frame, it's just that a7 IV is a better camera spec-wise. However, last time I did this comparison, it ended up being a little bit tricky to see which photo belonged to which camera. To be fair though, those shots in that video were all taken in a well-lit daylight environment. However, in this video, I want to do things a little bit differently. You see, for the ultimate comparison to take place, we will have to take these two cameras and put them up against each other in a few different environments and different lighting scenarios. All right, so let's start with an outdoor daylight environment. Here, I think that both of the cameras do a pretty decent job, and it can be a little bit tricky to see the difference. But just for the fun of it, you know, let's uh, throw up a few photos here and see if you can spot which is which. Now, if you said that the right side with the rolling R's was the Sony A6400, then, my friend, you're totally wrong. That was not the Sony A6400, that was the A7 IV. Now, if you said that uh, that was the A7 IV indeed, then uh, you win the prize. Great honor to your uh, whole village. For me in this scenario, one difference that I noticed is the bokeh. I was mostly using the Sigma 56mm on the APS-C, and the Sigma 85mm on the full frame. The reason for the choice of exactly these two lenses is that with the crop factor, the 56mm, it uh, punches into around 84mm, so it's right up the alley of that 85mm look, and I wanted the photos from both of the cameras to, you know, look as similar as I could. However, although both lenses are f1.4, then it's not really the same, due to the fact that the crop factor also affects the aperture. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, keep that in mind. Also, I want to add that the 85mm Sigma Art lens is obviously, you know, a better lens. It's a beautiful piece of glass, in my opinion. So it's maybe not fair to, you know, compare these two cameras with these two lenses, but, you know, uh, life isn't always fair. And to be fair, <laughs> that's a lot of fair, you know. Then the 56mm on APS-C is a fantastic port lens and, in my opinion, the best that I've tried. So, these are the two lenses that we're using, you know. Another little difference I can spot is the fact that the A7 IV offers a better dynamic range. This you can really start to feel when you edit the photos because you can, you know, push the shadows and highlights more without them breaking. And in all honesty, you can be a little bit more sloppy when photographing with the A7 IV. But if you're mindful and know how to work the A6400 to its limits, then it can be tricky to notice the difference, like you saw with the photo that I showed you in the beginning. Have you managed to figure it out yet, you know, uh, which was shot with which camera? So we're in the studio now, and uh, I was thinking, instead of using all of this, uh, you know, lighting equipment and these professional lights that you see here, then I'm thinking that I'm just going to use natural lighting source. We have some big, beautiful windows here. The reason is that all of you guys have uh, natural lighting available, unless you live, you know, deep in a cave, but I'm guessing you don't do that. Uh, but you might not all have some epic, you know, lighting equipment and studio equipment. Plus, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, then I'm uh, like, I suck at studio photography and I don't really understand all of that thing. And yeah, we do a little bit of uh, natural light photography. Here, I think things became really interesting to me because we're able, you know, to control the environment so much, we can basically do whatever we want, you know, then the difference became less obvious in my opinion. I mean, these two photos, they're pretty identical, don't you think? And then here, I decided to use f2.8 on the full frame and f1.8 on the APS-C. Oscar, how does it feel being so handsome? Ah, uh, it's a burden. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the middle of the photo shoot, Brandon, he entered the studio and started to talk to us. Uh, he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm doing a little uh, studio photography and I'm not using the lights because I suck at them. He thought that was utterly ridiculous and made fun of me for uh, thinking, you know, studio flashlights are intimidating and rigged up a pretty decent and simple uh, lighting for us in... Just a matter of minutes. Big thank you, Brandon. And to me, this is super interesting, maybe just because I'm a big camera nerd, but here you can really, really control the entire lighting setup. We decide everything. We're like gods in this space, you know? And then to me, it became quite hard to see a big difference, like one is better than the other difference. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if you start to pixel peep, the a7 IV with the Sigma sharp lens is a little bit sharper. But then again, the 56mm Sigma is also super sharp, as you can see here. So I'm not 
totally sure. I mean, what do you guys think? Is it easy or hard to spot the difference? I would honestly love to know, so please put the comments in the description down below and let me know, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of no. You know? Alright, so in the next lightning scenario, this is where things started to take a big turn. And I'm of course talking about... Have you told them yet? No, I totally forgot. Thank you for the reminder, Icelandic dad. No problem, Icelandic guy. So Atlas was kind enough to sponsor this video, which really helps me to create more and better content for you guys. I've also been getting my music there for years, and I really like the quality and how simple they made it to find exactly what type of music that you're looking for. Also, they have a huge sound effect library that is equally as categorized. I use this all the time in everything that I'm doing when it comes to content creation, and in my opinion, it's simply the best in the game. The cool thing also is that they offer a few different payment plans so everybody can find something that fits their needs. And then to those of you who want to take your content creation to the next level, they've actually now for the very first time bundled together all of their services under the same roof, which allows you to get access to everything that has to offer, which in my opinion is a huge game changer. So in the description you can find a link that gives you two months extra of your subscription, and by using it I get a little bit of kickback so you're helping me out while also getting some of the best music that you can find at the same time. Win-win situation. As I was saying, in the next lighting scenario that's where things started to um, take a little bit of a turn and became you know pretty interesting i'm of course talking about low light nighttime photography in my opinion if used correctly i think that you can get some nice nighttime photos with the asx 400 but the a7 IV, it's, uh, it's a lot better here, you know? And you can easily see it on these two photos. And then this one, this came out just so smoothly. It's, you know, uh, <laughs> using the a7 IV and the Sigma 85mm, it's, uh, it's like seeing in the dark, you know? Here I was also checking how far I could push each camera. And although the a7 IV is grainy, the a6400, you, you, you can see it. It's super, super grainy, you know, not usable. Now, I have to be honest with you here, I am not the best at nighttime photography by any stretch of the imagination, but to me, it's just pretty obvious that the a7 IV just smashes the a6400 here in the realm of uh, low-light uh, photography. And, you know, it's a clear winner here. Another thing that a uh, camera geek like me think is interesting is the fact that the a7 IV has more megapixels, which means that you can crop in on your photos and reframe them in post to a much greater extent without losing quality compared to the good old a6400. Now, the question has arrived. Which camera is a better? <laughs> it's obviously the a7 IV. But before you get all in the comments and start to comment something, it's not due to the fact of, you know, the APS-C sensor, but just the fact that it's a better camera spec-wise. However, the a6400, it's still a great camera. Some of my all-time best shots are taken on this little bad boy, and if you learn how to use it, you can honestly get some amazing results. I mean, it has always fascinated me that people, and me included, have that feeling to always think that we need the latest and greatest. And when you sit down and think about it, like in all honesty, do you really need it?